Hello everybody, my name is David. Thanks for watching this video. I'm a life coach. I try to help people heal from different kinds of trauma, specifically emotional trauma, specifically from narcissistic people. Today's video is about the lack of accountability and responsibility that narcissists lack. <laughs> That's what I said. And uh, I want to do a mock conversation. I think that might really validate some of your past experiences and hopefully help you with some of your future experiences you will have because not just because you have a history of dealing with narcissistic people, either it's your family or the people that you fell in love with or friends, it doesn't matter. You will deal with them again, not just because of that, because they make up a certain percentage of society and they don't all live and hide under rocks. We have to work with them. You might meet new family. You might uh, you might be introduced to people through your friends. Um, you might find that you're dating one again, or that your sibling is narcissistic. Something like this that you didn't know before, but you're going to in the future. So I hope that <clears throat> this helps you. Um, the the gaslighting, the projection. The stonewalling, uh, these techniques that narcissists use to manipulate you, to get what they want, to not be vulnerable, accountable, or responsible. These tactics are extremely damaging. They can be and are very damaging to children. Children have no defense against these things. Um, and it just causes a whole bunch of damage to children. And we grow up and we still deal with these people and don't know how. Don't know how. And um, now we are, hopefully we're healing from the experiences and relationships that we had with these people. And we want to move on with our lives and know how to navigate these experiences in the future if we have them. To know how what to do in, in simple conversations, right? How to argue effectively. So, uh, and... and Another part of this video is something that I see people in my weekly question and answer videos struggle with, and that's emotional accountability and responsibility, not just for our emotions, but also for our behaviors. And um, that gets very clouded, foggy, the lines get blurred with codependency, and a lot of us are confused because we didn't have the best teachers, caretakers to help us understand what we are responsible for and what we're not okay and then i want to talk about narcissist unaccountability and kind of go over a mock conversation um so we are responsible here's some of the things we are responsible for and that's our behaviors how we behave how we treat other people that's definitely what we are responsible for and we are responsible for our own emotions and this is where it sometimes get, gets confusing. We're responsible for our own self-care and protection. And so the conversation I've had with a, a couple of people is they believe I'm saying that, that we are, how do I word this? When I say to accept people for who they are, but we don't have to accept the behaviors. That gets confusing for some people, I'm sorry. Some people believe I'm saying that we accept the behaviors, and we don't. And when I say we accept people for who they are, we accept narcissists for being narcissists. We accept um, people for being toxic, that they may be abusive, things like this. Instead of holding our fingers and, and hoping that they'll change making excuses, saying that's not really them, that they were abused as a child, that they didn't mean it, that they were drunk, and that maybe I deserved it. All these kinds of things. Taking, us taking responsibility and accountability for someone else, for someone else's toxic behaviors, for the, that person abusing us. We are not responsible for how others treat us. We are not responsible for how, how others behave, their behaviors. We are not responsible for people that abuse us, neglect us. We're not responsible for other people's emotions. And we're not responsible for others' safety. I'm speaking of adults strictly. 
I think it's obvious that parents are responsible for a lot of these things for children. I'm not talking about that today. We are all adults here. That's what I'm speaking of. So, when someone hurts us, it's their fault. And we have emotions that, that we might feel hurt, and it's our responsibility. Okay? It's their responsibility for how they behaved. It's our responsibility for our emotions, so we accept that we're hurt. And we do what we can to make ourselves feel better. And we're responsible for protecting ourselves, for not allowing that person to keep hurting us. Okay? So, this gets really blurred with narcissists, with unhealthy people that aren't very emotionally intelligent. Okay? Mature. And they will not take accountability and they want something from you. So they argue with you and they accuse you and they project onto you and they gaslight, right? And, and it, it can be very confusing. I believe if this hasn't happened to you, it will, and it will happen again. So here's a scenario, okay? You, let's say me, I feel hurt by somebody in my life. This is somebody in my life. This isn't just uh, somebody I just met or an acquaintance or a coworker. This could be a sibling, a friend, uh, another family member, somebody that is in my life. Maybe they're new in my life. I'm trying to have a relationship with them. And I feel like they mistreated me. It doesn't matter what they did. It matters that I'm hurt. Okay? And so I want to make myself feel better. And I would like, I'm, I'm trying to have a relationship with this person. Very important. I'm trying to have a relationship with this person. So I want to make it work. And I got to protect myself. Make sure it doesn't happen again. So I tell the person, very healthy, how I feel, what I want. Okay? I say, I am hurt. And you mistreated me. You're not allowed to treat me this way. Okay? Ever again. The narcissist won't like that. For one, you're telling him who you are and about your feelings and they don't care. That's like an object, like a little alarm clock telling me how they feel and what they want from me. Don't care. Narcissists exploit people, objectify them, and put a value on them. And don't care how you feel, what you want, what you need, your opinions and your values, don't care. Okay? What you're telling them, since they're very, since they carry a lot of shame, don't like themselves, think they're bad people, you're, they feel challenged, they feel threatened, right? And so a normal defense response for someone who is very insecure narcissist will accuse you of lashing out to them. You're lashing out at me. How dare you? you? You you don't seem to understand that I am very busy and I'm very important and I have a lot more responsibilities than you do. Okay. I'm, I'm a, you know, vice president of a tech company and, and I, I have children to raise. You seem to not have much to do. And you just take care of a cat. That's all you do. Totally devaluing you, right? And they're projecting on you, aren't they? Because they're lashing out at you, accusing you of just lashing out at them. And then they say, tuck your crazy in and come at me correct. Now they're calling you crazy. So they are disrespecting you. They have devalued you. They're abusing you. Gaslighting and projection. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. So I say, you're abusing me and I will not do this anymore. You're not allowed to ever abuse me again. Stop. Okay? The narcissist, what else am I supposed to do when you come at me with all these wild accusations? Now, in fairness, they are hurt, aren't they? I am responsible for my behaviors. 
They are responsible for how they feel and protecting themselves. Okay? So they are hurt. What I said hurt them, right? They took it as I'm as they're a bad person. Doesn't matter what I did, fact is is they're hurt. And it is their responsibility to make themselves feel better. And one way they can do that is the way that we talked about, is we talk and communicate to the person and say, I'm hurt. Please don't hurt me this way again, what you did, you know, and I want a relationship with you. I want it to work. I want us to get along. But what they did is justify their, their behaviors. They literally justified abusing you and blamed you. They blamed me, right? I, I, I keep forgetting I'm the person. So they blamed me and they justified their behaviors. So they're not taking responsibility or accountability for the way they treated you and, and hurt you and they're not trying to make you feel better. They're telling you it's okay. They're telling you it's okay and they're blaming you. So they're not taking any responsibility for it. So at this point is when we start accepting someone for who they are, okay? And we don't try to change them. People are different. And now we're learning that somebody is not the same as you. That somebody does not value the same things you value. Now, I'm going to assume that those of you who are watching this video share some of the same values I do. I say that because we're not all the same on this planet. And there is a lot of people that do not value respect honesty, integrity, loyalty, these kinds of things. And I have to accept this and understand this and realize that I'm going to come across people that do not value the same things I do. And I'm not going to try to change them or fix them. We call it help. And I'm going to not cross my fingers. I'm not going to accept it no matter what. But what is really important is that I stay true to who I am. And I just told you who I am. So I better show that. Because if I don't show who I just told you I am, I am unstable and it feels like crap. And all of you probably know what that feels like sometime in your life, if not now. Because when we don't stay true to who we are, then we don't know. We don't feel like we know who we are. Our, our, our stability, our sense of self is unstable. Many of you um, compromised what you value to these people in these relationships because you didn't leave and they abused you so many times, they pushed you back and we may, do a, may, we may have a reactionary abuse, which is still abuse, not okay. But we may start calling them names. We may start gaslighting them. We may hit them back, finally. And that feels awful. It feels horrible to be abused. We are, that's a toxic situation, absolutely, of course. And now we didn't get, we didn't stop it and we're joining in and now we're doing it. And that feels awful if you value respect, honesty, loyalty, things like this, okay? So what's important is that no matter what people are doing, no matter who people are, that you remain true to yourself, that you always show who you are in your behaviors, how you treat people and your choices and decisions. Let them best ex uh, show who you are. Let them best ex exemplify who you really are. And so I am getting upset at this point in this conversation. I'm being abused. I'm being gaslit. I want to yell. I want to tell this person off because the old me would. The old me could be pretty nasty when pushed uh, far enough. And the old me thought it was okay that if you're attacking me, I attack you back. I'm defending myself. Well, let's look at physical defense because it can be similar. Same thing. If somebody's hitting me, I can defend myself and hit them back. Right? But what if they're standing five feet away from me and walk over and come over and hit me and stand five feet away from me again and then come over and hit me and sit there and do that every 60 seconds on the dial. They go like this and they say, I'm going to hit you every minute. You can walk away. 
You don't have to stay and fight. You don't have to argue and call them names. You don't have to hit them back. I'm not saying don't defend yourself. If someone's hitting you, you have every right to do whatever you can to stop it. If that's hit them back, if that's run, whatever you got to do, okay? But this person is abusing me, and I don't have to allow it. I'm going to stop it, and I don't need to argue. I don't need to save face, my pride, my ego, because by doing those things, I am not myself. Because I choose who I am and I want to be a very good person that does what I say. That I say I am, I value respect towards people, so I'm always going to treat people with respect. I'm not going to say, well, I know I was disrespectful this time, well, they disrespected me. No, it doesn't matter. It's awful when we're in a, in a, in a, a bad, toxic experience and someone's mistreating you in any way, and we got to make it stop. But if we can walk away, we walk away. We don't stay and fight. We don't wait for them to change. We don't argue and say, look, look, you're doing this and you got to stop or I'm going to do this. And, okay. So this is what I replied to them. Remember the last thing they said is, what else am I supposed to do when you have all these wild accusations? So I just told this person, you're abusing me. You're disrespecting me. You're devaluing me. You're abusing me and it hurts and you're not allowed to ever again. And they say, what else am I supposed to do with all your wild accusations? So they take no accountability. They take no responsibility to do anything about it. They blame you. So <clears throat> that tells you they're okay with it. There's somebody that abuses somebody and we have to accept that. We can't say, oh, they're nice other times. Yes, people are very multifaceted. Yeah. Uh, do any of you abuse people though? Because that's wrong no matter how many good deeds you've done. It's wrong. And we don't say, yeah, but you know, I donated money to the children's uh, Dornbecker's hospital. So, yeah, I mean, I beat the shit out of my wife. But man, I'm a really good person in society. That was a slip. Oops. No. We aren't talking about anything else. We're talking about that. So, I say, you are justifying abuse. You are blaming me and this tells me you are okay with abusing people and abusing me and you will always do it again because what we need emotional need number one is security and if somebody hurts you hits you cheats on you lies to you hurts you and you want to have a relationship with them there must be security period if there is no security and we don't fix that and we continue that relationship, it's sick, it's toxic, it's codependent, right? Just like I continue doing drugs no matter how bad they are for me. Now, I know they cause all these problems when I'm going to continue to do drugs. Why? Because I'm addicted. Because I'm dependent on them. And it's a dependent relationship. Codependent. The narcissist says, you're blaming me? You started all of this. But the first message you gave me was toxic. It was, it was mean, it was abusive. You're accusing me of doing other things. I, what, who cares, right? It doesn't, be, the, it doesn't matter what someone did. It matters how you feel, okay? Really important here because what bothers me may not bother you or somebody else. And we don't need to have this conversation. But this bothers me. And so the person will try to talk all about the action and defend it, right? I, I did this because you did this. I didn't rationalize it, justify it, right? But when we talk about the emotion, there's not much else they can do to argue that. You hurt me. They'll say things like, well, you take things too personally. That's fine. You hurt me. Well, you're a pretty emotional person. You hurt me. Well, you're, you're pretty sensitive. You hurt me. Right? Well, I didn't mean to. I was drunk. I, you, you, were, you did it to me first. And you know, blah, 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 blah. That's fine. doesn't matter. Win the argument. Get out of it. Fake cry and go to bed. Doesn't matter. You hurt me. And I don't feel secure in this relationship that you won't do it again. You tell me it's okay. You justify it. You literally are telling me it's okay to abuse me sometimes. Um, think about someone smearing you. I, I A lot of you guys know I had somebody freaking smear me and, and stalk me still for three and a half years. 
and they made video after video after video trying to convince everyone I am a bad person. I said nothing, I did nothing in return. So they and many people said, hey, you're, you're abusing this person, you're attacking them and, and smearing them and all this. And they justified it, they rationalized it, they defended it and said, it's okay. It's okay to do this because he's a bad person. I can do whatever I want to the bad people. So I don't care what you're going to say somebody else did. You are abusing people and you believe it's okay. You can say sometimes, sure, not all the time. Okay, but you still believe it's okay to abuse people. This person I'm having this fake conversation with believes that it's okay to abuse me. You can say that you did it because of this or that or because of me or I made you or I did it first and you started it. Do you see that? So if this person, which this person, narcissist, would say that, oh yeah, I value respect. Oh yeah, I value integrity and loyalty and honesty. Well, you're not showing it. You're not showing, you're not being true to yourself. And so you're rejecting and denying yourself and that feels really unstable, okay? So I say, if you felt that I hurt you, right? Because they're... Their justification and defense is that I lashed out at them first. I started all this. It's okay. I know I'm abusing you, but you started it. You did it first. Now, I can sit there and defend what I did, and I can accuse them, and I can call them a narcissist that they are, and I can say you're, you're you know, doing all these different tactics of abuse. You're sick. You're toxic. But instead, I'm going to stay respectful and honest and true to myself. And I'm going to make myself feel better, not worse, because behaving that way, nasty, feels bad. Right? And we lose our se sense of self sometimes, especially around people like this and scenarios like this. We lose a sense of ourselves sometimes. And we lash out and we defend and we abuse back. And that feels bad. So, out of an extremely toxic situation, I'm going to do what feels best. And that's going to be myself. Okay, I'm not going to let this person divert me from who I am. And I'm going to protect myself so this person never does it again. Because we are accepting that this person does this. They may change tomorrow. They may change next year. They may be, you know, the most caring, empathetic, wonderful, beautiful person in the world. Probably not tomorrow. It might take longer than that. But today, they're ugly. Today... Their behaviors are extremely ugly and they're hurting you and they're not sorry and they're going to do it again. So it's my responsibility. I'm not responsible for what they did. They accused me of hurting them first. I'm responsible for that. I'm responsible for anything I did that hurt them. Okay? I, I know that might sound a little weird, but I am responsible for what I did. She says, or he says, that it, I hurt them. Somebody else may not be hurt. They are. And that's what's important. I don't want to hurt people. So I say, if you felt I hurt you, then we could have talked about it. But you are not allowed to ever treat me this way again. So I'm going to accept who you are. Very important here. I'm going to accept who you are. And I'm not going to accept your behaviors any longer. I know that justifying abuse shows me that you are a person who does that and will do it again. So I'm not, the only control I have is my own choices and decisions. I cannot control this person. I must accept who they are. And that allows me to make the best choice next. To make myself feel better and to make sure they never do it again to protect myself. People will hurt you in the world. You wanna start a new relationship with someone, you probably will be hurt. Um, I, I remember I started dating someone once that, that tried to make me promise to never hurt them. And I said, geez, you know, I like to believe I'm very aware of, of what I'm doing and very mindful of my actions and stuff. And I don't want to hurt you. But gosh, I might on accident. I can't promise that. I think that's more secure than saying, I'll never hurt you. Never hurt anyone. I'll never hurt anyone. I'll never hurt you. Promise no matter what. I'm always aware of myself and what I'm doing. <laughs> so the narcissist right? Oh my God, you're going to accept who I am. Nobody wants to hear that. Imagine hearing that. I understand that that doesn't feel good. Okay. I'm responsible for my actions and my actions were still respectful. I wasn't, I didn't disrespect them. I didn't abuse them. I didn't accuse them. I just say, I won't accept these behaviors. You're not allowed to treat me this way ever again. I'm going to accept who you are 
and I'm just not going to accept the behaviors in my life any longer. And they lash out and they abuse you. You're a piece of crap. How dare you? I'm going to never talk to you again. And you're like, good, please. And then I'm going to go go out and maybe it's your boyfriend. I'm going to go out and screw every girl in town. I'm going to screw your friend and you're, you're nothing to me and you're worth nothing. And I'm so much more important than you. Go back to your miserable life with your lame family and blah, blah, blah. Right. And you just say, please do not contact me ever again. And we block them and we do not read messages from them anymore. And we, we don't hope they'll change because this person has exploited me, treated me like an object, totally devalued me like an object. <clears throat> and when somebody sees you like an object and then mistreats you and abuses you like an object, I, I just don't see how somebody's ever going to see the humanity in you. I'm not. It, that, that would be like, I feel like this is an object. It is. And I don't care how it feels, what it wants, what it needs. And I'm not going to. There's not enough therapy, doctors, medicine, that's going to make me say, oh, man. Well, maybe maybe there's some crazy drugs out there. For like acid or something. I don't know. I'm going, oh, yeah, I love you. Yeah, it's not going to happen. We have to accept that people are all different. We're all different. And and a lot of us share the same values and morals. And that's the only people that relationships are going to work with. Period. And we have to have our emotional needs met. We've got to have security. It's okay when we hurt each other. It's going to happen. But the more emotionally secure we are and intelligent we are and mature we are, these things hurt less and these scenarios don't have to happen four years into a relationship. They can happen four months, four weeks, four days. So we're not so attached, right? So it doesn't have to hurt so bad. And we don't become so dependent, so afraid to lose them. We can save our, 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 our self-worth. Do this early and avoid severe loss and depression. Right, make a toxic situation feel good by cutting out the stress, not fighting with them, not defending yourself, not not getting in these conversations of listing everything. Because this toxic person, this let's say this was in text, okay, this was all text messages. This person's probably called me eight times during this conversation. Why? Not to make me feel better, because they're manipulating me, trying to get what they want without having to do anything for it. Right? So I eliminated stress, raised my self worth. I must be worthy of better than this, and I showed it. Right? But I stayed true to myself. I stayed who I am. And I can't explain to you the difference of that. I didn't allow them to abuse me. There's not much shame and guilt involved in this now. Okay? I, I, I stopped this dead in its tracks and didn't let it continue and brush it under the carpet or just listen to them blame me and say, oh, okay, yeah, what could I do better? Yeah. I held them accountable. I tried. And I didn't have to fight and argue and disrespect them back. I stayed true to who I am and it feels really good. It would feel really good, okay? And so I hope that this helps you guys a little bit, these kind of mock conversations. Let me know if you want me to make more. I can do more. I just think it's imperative uh, because we haven't been taught uh, how to do this by our parents. If you're in these relationships, if you're in situations like this, guys, this is from childhood because our parents teach us not to do this. Not that it's wrong or bad. They teach us how to navigate and protect ourselves and communicate and get what we want and need. And not allow people to do this to us. And effectively communicate how to stop it. What to do. But our parents couldn't have. Because if you knew how to do this, why wouldn't you? Why would you continue these kinds of experiences with people like this for so long? Now, a lot of this stuff does take a long time to surface. Um, I was in a 10-year relationship with someone extremely toxic. And I'm not saying there weren't red flags, but the abuse, the physical abuse, the mental abuse, emotional abuse really took at least a year and a half to start. 
and that's that can be very common usually six months or more till it even surfaces and that's why we don't know people right away and we don't jump right in and commit to relationships with people right away that's how we get hurt guys no matter who the other person is going too fast we get hurt and 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 we sh we feel that we know that we're scared and all these fears kick in Fear of abandonment and fear of rejection and fear of intimacy. All this, no matter how fast you're going, is going too fast. Not comfortable. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if this helped you. Uh, uh, tell me your own experiences. I would love to hear them. I do like hearing them. Because even though you know we can't say, oh, I had the same experience. We, we, none of us did. Similar. Different, different people, different ways, different words, different timing. So if you feel like sharing yours, please do. And uh, always ask me questions. I'll always answer all of them. And you can find me on daviddemars.com if you want coaching. Love yourself first, guys. Thank you.